In this video, I'll break down for you why I stopped trading small accounts. And for some context, I've been trading now since 2013, full time since 2017. So it's quite a while back that I stopped trading these small accounts, trying to grow them to bigger accounts, but it's still very relevant to explain why. So let's dive right in. All right, so people who are following me on YouTube sometimes and when I'm prone to trading on bigger accounts, kind of getting capital, getting funded, think that I've always been that way. I, I was kind of lucky, I was rich from the start, and it couldn't be further from the truth. I began trading when I was 18 with a $700 account, which was to me at the time a lot, but these days, pretty much nothing, like pennies. I had to take a lot of my savings back then eventually to put into my account, and I came up with this like roughly 5,000 account when I got profitable. That was all I had back then. So I was working really hard on my trading, trying to become profitable, trying to do everything I could to get good results. And I had this kind of mental deadline in my head of whenever I finish university, back then this was in 2017 or 2016, I'll go full time and I'll go travel and like live my best life and go around the world. And for this, I had to be, of course, become profitable, which I was kind of back then. But I also had to get enough capital to sustain my lifestyle. I was speaking with the trader back then on how to kind of get the capital to go full time, how I was able to save money. And this is when I hit a pretty big reality check. That friend of mine, the trader full time I was speaking to, had to save money for 10 years working in a full time job, like 100k per year of salary and more, just to be able to save enough money to go full time trading. That to me was a big job. And I just couldn't see how I was able to do it. I was a student, I was having some different jobs, I was working in some factories, and I had a decent income but not enough to for sure save enough money to go full time right away in the same year. I had like a year left and I had to find a solution to, to get there. So either I would grow my small account, my 5k account to a big amount of capital and take a lot of risk, or I was gonna not know how to do exactly, but I knew I had to find a solution to do it. This led me down the path of looking for investors. And I guess what you would see these days as prof firms, but back then there were more investors. Prof firms weren't a thing too much in 2017 when I was about to go full time. Well, now they're much more common. But I began to look around for people who could give me capital for trading. And I didn't really push it too much. I was just kind of sort of searching a little bit, trying to find different things where I got approached by an investor to trade for him. And things kind of unfolded from there. I often tell that story on YouTube and in many places, but in one afternoon, I went from trading my small $5,000 account to going to a $70,000 account right away in one afternoon by talking to that investor, sharing what I do and all that stuff around. And that was a big change for me. Now, this is kind of when I realized that to be able to get full time to make enough money trading, you didn't have to flip a small account. I was seeing all these videos of people online who would flip their small account. They would go for like 100 to $2 million in like a couple of weeks. And that sounded very, very interesting, but also kind of for sure risky and not too realistic overall. By the way, so I know a few people online who are claiming they turned a small account to a big account. They're either one, taking a lot of risk and could blow it up, or two, they have multiple accounts where they take different trades, like opposing trades. And then one of the accounts eventually will grow, will grow big, the other ones will all blow up. And that's kind of what they show on YouTube. They show the big account that went from the small amount of money to this big, like two million, five million or more dollars. But they had to go through many, many accounts that blew up to get to that point. That's just how the game goes. If you want me to do another video about how this works out and how people are kind of claiming these accounts, they turn into millions, I'll do one. I'm happy to, to do that. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. That could be fun to do. So I'll, I'll see if I can do it uh, in the future. But back to the point of why I dropped to try growing my small trading account. So by the time I got this capital from this investor, I kind of started to think a bit more smart. I was like, well, now I get this profit from this investor. What do I do with it? Do I spend it all into my livings? Do I, do I invest most of it? Do I kind of buy a new computer, buy new equipment? What did I do with it? What would be the best use of that capital for me, for my goals to grow and become better? And the reason why I was able to kind of go full time faster and trade my own account eventually, the fastest way, was because I kind of did things smart back then. I like to think I made a good decision there, but what I did was very simple. I took these profits I was getting from that investor, from that funded account I had from that person, and every month I would sort of like work it down. So I would take only about 30% from my expenses. I was living back then on very low expenses. I was able to even like travel the world for $1,000 or $2,000 a month maximum. And I was pretty okay with it. I was pretty happy with that kind of money, uh, that kind of, of lifestyle as well. I could enjoy a beer in Thailand or in Vietnam on the beach. I could have fun. I could go to like pretty cool hotels or sometimes like nice places on the beach. I could be pretty much anywhere else I wanted, of course, in the budget, but I was able to live my ideal lifestyle still. So I would take that money I was getting every month from that investor and put it into a few different things. I have this plan that I have for even today, the same thing. It's for my own trading. Whenever I get some returns, I take part of it and I use for my expenses. Part of it I save passively. Part of it I save more actively for my education, for investing myself, 
for trading. And the other part, I tend to just give it away to some charities or things that I believe in. And that's kind of how uh, it works out for me. So this is something I've done back then. You'll see it, of course, here on the screen. But I'll do a more detailed video on that next week about how to grow your small account without prop firms, how you can kind of grow your account by yourself, how you can leverage that and do a few things the smart way. So that's going to be covered in the next video. So make sure you subscribe for that. But for now, this is the framework I use. And you can use the same thing if you want or kind of tweak it. I'll go more in depth on that in the next video. This has been a very big help for me to be able to have income every month, but also to not just that, kind of break it down into different categories. Depending on my goals, I, I got to have something where I invested for safety in the future. I got to have some parts where I invest more, more actively, where I want to manage it more. Where I want to kind of get better returns with it, which is trading or education for me. Either I invest in myself and the coach, someone to help me or building some skills or I invest this into my trading account to grow that capital over time. And this is kind of what helped a lot for me. Now, I want to make a point here about what you decide to trade on a small account or a big account, like flip your small account or kind of trade your bigger account. What it comes down to in the end is, are you looking for big rewards or small rewards? So are you looking for big targets, big profits? Are you looking to like go from 5K to 100K? Are you looking for smaller targets, like a 1%, 2%, maybe even like a 15% a year, 20% a year is fine for you? Those are smaller targets, smaller rewards. But big rewards usually come with bigger risks. So if you have a 5K account, you want to grow it to 100K or even beyond that, well, keep in mind that you could go from 5 to 50, then you blow up, then you lose your account completely. Then you got to start from scratch. That's the risk. That's part of it, right? And it's also a lot more mentally draining and stressful when you trade a small account and try to go for big profits because you've got more risk, more drawdown on there. And you got to be able to handle these drawdowns and recover on the other side better. Now, if you trade on a bigger account, 100K, 200K, 500K, or even beyond that, of course, you want to get there at some point in your trading career then it becomes a lot of a different game. Then you don't have to risk too much. You can risk very little in your trades. You can be very comfortable. Uh, you can have drawdowns that are no more than 5%, maybe 8% maximum if you want to, depending on how you risk on that account. And you don't need to make much returns per year to just get a good salary. If you've got somewhere of a 500k account, which is kind of close to where I'm at these days, more or less, then all you got to do is make a few percent a month. By 5% a month on that is $25,000 a month, which is quite good. You could even make less than that. I maybe you want to aim for 4%, 3 to 4% is good to me. And that's a decent monthly return. That's something you wouldn't be able to get with a small account. And that's only because you've been playing it smart with your finances and you've been able to grow a bigger account. Now, this is not to say that having a small account is exciting or anything of a sort. Of course, it's fun. Of course, you can have a lot of fun with it. It can feel very thrilling and very cool to have your small account and grow it to a bigger account. Of course, it's good for like social proof. You can show your friends, oh, I went from this small account to this big account. That's all cool and fun. But in the end, Trading is a business where you should be able to get paid for being professional and doing things the right way and following a process. And I think having a small account is making it a lot tougher to do that. And the cool thing is for a lot of people, it doesn't matter where you are or what your past is, that shouldn't be reflected on how much money you trade with anymore. Back in the day when you had no prof firms, that was a big thing. Now these days with prof firms, it's of course a lot easier to build up your account with these funded accounts, these prof firms. You can trade for them. Some have better rules than other ones. I recently, a few months back, launched my own funded accounts at Desert Trade. I'll leave them below so you can check it out. This is basically how you can get funded with no time limit. Very simple rules. The rules are super easy to follow and they're very straightforward and you have no time limit any at all because I think these are hurting traders and not helping them grow. They're ha actually helping them blow up accounts more and more. So I don't want you to have any rush, any pressure to perform or to pass for evaluation. So if you feel like you want to have a look at this, I'll leave the link below for that. You can check it out. I hope this was useful for you here. A quick kind of like backstory, go back in the past. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you're subscribed for Sentinel yet. I publish videos like this three times a week. One interview in the weekend, two videos in the week where I teach you stuff about trading, some lessons, some advice, some of my experiences. And I'll catch you back here, of course, in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.